Hey guys, subscribe for daily content. And if you're shopping for gear, make sure you check out the description for the newest items at some of the very best online retailers. There's also links for some of the items that I personally recommend. Thanks. What's going on YouTube? Metal Complex here and today I've got another interesting knife review slash knife overview to show with you guys. This is the Remet Steed, a larger titanium button lock knife. Uh, definitely uh, on the more premium side, but uh, a very competitive price tag for sure. It is available. I will link it right down below so you guys can check it out if you want to. It does help my channel when you use those links, but that's entirely up to you. Thanks so much to Remet for sending this knife in for review. Thanks to my patrons for supporting me. And please make sure to follow me on Instagram at metal underscore complex. Let's go ahead and get a measurement of this knife. It's certainly not a small knife. Honestly, this is like a really good looking knife. I, I like Remet's or Remet. I like their general aesthetic perimeters that they stay within. They, they, they've got good looking knives. The overall length is coming in at about eight and an eighth. Blade length is three and a half if we go to the middle of the frame. Cutting edge is coming in at 3.35 inches. Let's go ahead and do some size comparisons. Uh, any custom skills you find in this section can be found down in the description under Original Goat and others. So uh, up against the AD10 and the AD20.5, you can see here it's full size knife. It's just not quite as big as something like the AD10. How about up against the Spyderco PM2 and the Spyderco Para 3? It's much closer to the size of the PM2, but with more cutting edge for sure. Like not a ton more, but it's definitely got more cutting edge. And then last but not least, let's put it up against the Benchmade Griptilian, or in this case, the Ritter Hogue. Almost exactly the same overall length. And the Hogue Deca. How's the action on this knife? The action is very good, actually. Um, the flipping action is great. The button lock action is great. You push the button and it falls. It doesn't matter. Actually, if you push it really hard, I just did it there. I pushed really hard. If you push it really hard, you can get some plunge drag, right? But pushing the button normally, yeah. Actually, there's quite a range. So this is something I talk about with button lock knives sometimes. Some button lock knives, you push them. It doesn't matter how hard you push them and it just drops the blade. Some of them, you push them, and you got to push it a little bit to get the blade to drop. But if you push it slightly too hard, it starts to drag. And then it, it won't drop into place, which is something that doesn't bother some people. But boy, does it bother me. And then other ones, it does. this is another thing that doesn't bother me near as much. You got to push it, but there's a huge amount of range where the button can be continued to be pressed before it starts to drag. Either way... After experiencing this with one of Senkut's button lock knives, this is apparently something that breaks in and goes away over time. This one is not starting with much. The term I invented to complain about, by the way, is called plunge drag. So enjoy that. Um, but uh, yeah, this one doesn't seem to be having much of an issue. And any issue that actually is there, like if you just like really love pushing button lock knives super duper hard, it should eventually go away. But in my opinion, the action is really nice. And in particular... I think it's more just the shape of the flipper tab, but the detent that's being created by the plunge lock is actually pretty nice. I mean, you can see here, I mean, this is a pretty nice flipper, honestly. It's it's good. How about carry profile length and, uh, well, no, thickness up against the Spyderco Pair 3. This is maybe a hair thicker, right? Maybe a hair. I mean, we do actually have some subtle contouring on the titanium, it's just slightly thicker. Length and height up against the PM2. And the pair of three, which is right here. Uh, this is not going to be, a, in fact, it's, it's not quite as long even than the PM2. The flipper tab, including the maximum, like the height on the spine, it's approaching the height of the PM2, but not quite, not quite as long. Definitely bigger overall than the pair of three. Materials, we are looking at M390, titanium, and carbon fiber. Nice carbon fiber, but what are they heat treating that M390 to? So I had this in my pocket uh, in and out over the last like two or three days. It was like, technically three days, but it's being rotated. Like if you're wondering like, how do you have time to review all these knives? I don't carry the same knife all day. I have like two or three that I'm reviewing and I kind of rotate them depending on what it is that I'm doing so that I can get some things done, right? Now a lot of people are gonna say, you can't review a knife unless you carry it for like a month. To those people I say, um, no, I'm. this is how I do this. I'm just a regular guy, and I know that the vast majority of the people watching my channel are also regular, just like walking around cutting random things like normal things with pocket knives, right? On top of that, I'm a design reviewer, so I'm not really like trying to tell people how well this thing is going to do in a survival scenario. That's not what I'm doing. That's not what the vast majority of people are doing, right? There are channels for that, but this is not one of them. Um, 
when the heat treat is bad, like when it's really bad, and I've handled some bad, like some soft M390, a few cuts, I'm talking like less than 10 minutes of cutting cardboard will dramatically dull the edge. So while I don't have the proper equipment to test whether or not this rock wall hardness they're claiming is true, I can tell you that if it was really soft, it definitely would have dulled for what I was using it for. I cut some cardboard with it for, I don't know, maybe 15 minutes. And it's it's fine. In fact, it's I, I don't think... No, there's nothing. It does, the edge doesn't really feel like anything happened to it. And it's still slicing extremely well. I mean, like, maybe not as perfectly as it was when it came out of the box, but it's still slicing perfectly well, or just fine. They're claiming 60 to 61. If that's true, that's great. I hope uh, LTK or some other people can test and make sure that that's actually correct. But if that's where they're actually hitting it, that's great. I think that that's just fine. Um, so we have M390, titanium, and carbon fiber. The weight on this knife, which, by the way, is not milled out for any weight reduction at all. Um, it doesn't necessarily feel that. I bet this comes in about 5 ounces. Yeah, 5.15 ounces. A little on the heavy side for some people, right? Not crazy. It's likely that your cell phone in its case weighs a lot more than that. But um, not an absolutely massive knife, but not a small knife either. If you're used to carrying smaller knives, it's definitely going to feel heavier. Uh, for you. Let's go ahead and do a hardware check. I'll get out my tools as per usual. My tools are very inexpensive and very recommendable. You can find them right down in the section of my description that talks about the tools I use in this channel. I'm going to go with a T8 first. Just feel like that's probably, you know what, that's going to be a T10, but these screws down here are T8, which is fantastic. And we have, for some reason, they went T6 on that one pocket clip screw. Two T8 screws right there, two T8 screws on the show side, and then we have almost certainly a T10 right here let's give that a look yeah it's a t10 it is a double-sided pivot unfortunately so you're probably going to need two drivers that's annoying right d-shaped pivot barrels captive pivots come on what year is it 2023 that's right come on captive pivots guys still though very easy to uh take apart and reassemble right do maintenance on it's easy as long as you have the right tools for the job you should be good to go Let's go ahead and measure blade stock thickness. I bet, ooh, that's kind of, it's like a hefty boy. I bet that's 150 thousandths. Let's take a look. Yup, man, almost exactly 155 thousandths there on the thicker side, but not crazy, right? All right, meat and potatoes time. We got to do this, guys. It's a button lock. I have not tested this yet. I haven't. I like this knife. I've been carrying it. Again, I haven't been doing anything crazy with it, but there are situations where, man, if you're wondering what's that sound, it's me putting on my safety gauntlet. Safety first, huh? You think you take safety seriously? You don't. I do. Get on my level. You need to be wearing steel gauntlets before you do this, okay? Anyways, um, I haven't been going around doing anything crazy with this, but there are knife tasks that require a blade get plunged into something that might cause it to get stuck. And when you wiggle this blade free, if the blade disengages because of spine pressure, it's coming down in your hand, right? So while I don't agree with uh, putting a knife in a vise and beating on the spine of it with a sledgehammer, I think that's idiot behavior, um, I think a, a few light to medium wax on the spine to test if that button lock will stay in place is worth it. So let's give this a shot. It's pretty good. I'm shaking everything on my table. Impressive. Pass, pass, run it, pass. There are other button locks have, have um, uh, passed, except for the, was it the Rhino? And then they fixed it and said, re-review this. <laughs> I said, okay, and it did. That was a different one. That wasn't a plunge lock. That was a button-operated liner lock of some sort. Um, uh, leaf spring, something or other. But anyways, yeah, that's great. That's what I want to see. Cool, right? So the knife functions as it should, has a good detent, has a good locking system. It's nice and convenient, nice and smooth, subtle, light plunge drag, but nothing that won't work itself out. The inlay, this is a little bit busy. It might be a little busy for some people. It's interesting how they did this, how they created this design here, but the inlay work is nice and the carbon fiber that they used is nice. It's not that shiny stuff that looks like a sticker. It's actual carbon fiber. Really, really good. You can see there. Edges of all the inlays really nicely knocked down. Look at this little area, the milling area for the um, 
uh, for the uh, pocket clip. You know what it looks like? It looks like those things that you stand on in Super Mario 3 and they change color and wiggle for a little bit and then drop. <laughs> That's what that makes me think of. <laughs> the a pivot is kind of, it almost looks like it's hammered. I mean, it's machined, obviously, but it, it has a hammered look. I like these little lines right here. Kind of remakes, It kind of reminds me of uh, something that Freeman does, like on their, on their blades. Uh, it looks good. I mean, it, most importantly, it's comfortable. It actually doesn't look like it would be, but it is. This is a comfortable knife to hold. You really only have, if your hands are about my size, you really only have one option. I wear an XL glove. I know a lot of you have a very similar sized hands to mine. If your hands are a little smaller than mine, you'll be you'll have a little more room to, to move around, but this is fine. Mil the milled clip is wide enough and knocked down enough at the edges where it's not too, you're gonna know it's there, but it's not too much of a hot spot. I like all the detail here in the clip. Look at this. Look at this fuller, this area that's milled out, its edges are knocked down here. Like this is a lot of work for a popsicle stick style clip, but Hey, that's great. And they gave you a spot on the other side, which is cool. The blade also looks nice. We have a flat that technically carries out right to where it starts to taper down to the tip. So this is what? 75%. Nice big swedge. We have what looks like some sort of media blasted blade, whether it's like glass or I don't know if it's like a ceramic blasting or what, what it is. Right, um, but looks good. There's a weird area down here right before the apex where it kind of starts to change colors. The actual apex is very, very even until we get to here, and then it's, it went a little hunky dory in there. I don't know what what happened there. It doesn't look the best. Remit, we got to get this area right here figured out. Well, this is referred to as a smile, and uh, it um, it doesn't look super duper great. Now, over time, as you sharpen this, um, it will either become eliminated or the entire thing will look like crap. It just depends on your skill. <laughs> <laughs> but at least the crappiness will be, I'm, I'm speaking from experience, right? When I do it, the whole thing just ends up looking crappy. And I'm like, oh, well, at least it's uniform now, right? Um, but uh, yeah, and you know what? The slicing geometry of this knife is not bad. I mean, pushing it through cardboard, I, you know, I, I suppose in some ways I was slowed down more than, you know, I would have been with an open L. But honestly, the factory edge has a is is really nice, right? It's sharpened well. This is actually cutting really well, considering I didn't I didn't like overwork the thing, right? I just it it's it's Christmas time, so we have no shortage of boxes. So I can go out there and take one box and turn it into five to ten minutes of work if I want to, just to see. And this did fine, right? Um, the uh, there's a like a big I don't know what this is, right? like sound waves coming off of a hockey puck. I'm not really sure. Um, but it says Remat right there. And then over here, it's more sound waves coming off of a hockey puck or a lot of larger hockey pucks bullying a smaller hockey puck. I'm, I really have no idea what that is. Um, the jimping up here honestly does complement the index finger position well. I would not put your index finger up here and choke up. I do like that there's a little hole in the flipper tab. I think that looks good. All the way around, the fit and finish is just very, very good on this knife. There's nothing really to complain about here in terms of fit and finish. We have just a couple of standoffs here, no backspacer, that's fine. We have a lanyard hole, great. Uh, the pocket clip is mounted for kind of a medium carry depth, and that's fine. Just a little bit sticking out of the pocket, no big deal. I do not like pocket clips that do this, up and over. That is a little pinchy. I like pocket clips that do this, down and up, swoop, right? Again, this up and over, it's a little pinchy. Truthfully, in and out of the pocket, it was fine. I just prefer the swoop because I think it works a little bit better. Um, what's a good example? Do I have one? No, all three, literally all three of the pocket clips on my left um, that are milled are all doing the same thing. Um, but yeah, that's just a preference. So, okay. Um, we have a very smooth surface. So in the pocket, like I said, it's going to be fine either way. No shouldering. That's okay. Kind of a robust stop pin. Look at that. Uh, it does say, by the way, M390 right there. We have uh, no blade play up, down, left, or right. <laughs> Up, down, left, or right. No lock stick at all. Nothing. No pivot lash. Extremely smooth and consistent in here. And honestly, the button lock, the plunge lock D10 is pretty good. And we also have perfect centering with, wow, yeah, no, no uh, detent lash either. This is a nice knife. Honestly, uh, I think they want $195 to $198 for this thing. Um, yeah, assuming that that heat treat really is 
60 to 61. Like, and listen, Remet, if you guys aren't doing that, somebody's going to figure it out. I'm just saying this because you guys are a new company. So far, it sounds like you guys are doing a pretty good job, right? The one thing I had a problem with, they man, they jumped on that and fixed it, sent me a new one, and it was awesome. So, yeah, I have, I have faith in you guys, but listen, that heat treat thing, you can't fudge those numbers. That's got to be real, right? So somebody who has the equipment to test it properly is going to find out. So let's make sure those numbers are really there. But as far as, you know, from my perspective, it's fine. It, it seems to be doing just fine. I do like the design. I do like the quality. It can hold up. I mean, I, I mean, you know, I have the proper equipment to test the, uh, the locking system. Um, yeah, I, I like this. I, so I'm, I'm going to call this a recommendable knife. If you're spending money in this territory, this is pretty cool, right? Well, we don't necessarily have a ton of titanium button locks, right? Um, so, yeah, I uh, I like this. I think this is neat. I think you guys will be um, really happy with it. So I'll uh, I'll put this in my recommended nice playlist. That's going to be pretty much it today, guys. Please make sure to follow me on Instagram at metal underscore complex if you enjoyed this video. Leave a like. If you'd like to check out my other content, I do, of course, have lots of videos of knives that are either expensive or inexpensive that I do or don't like. So check those out. If you enjoy all my content, go ahead and click on that Metal Complex logo right there and subscribe because there's definitely more coming. Thanks again for watching, everybody, and have a great day.